are about to hear a romantic drama, Devil Wind, adapted from a story in Street and Smith's Love Story magazine and featuring the love story girl in the role of Dusky Burke. This is the love story of Dusky Burke, who had always had wealth and position and everything she wanted until her father died. Then even the beautiful home in Beverly Hills had to be sold. And for the first time in her life, Dusky Burke found herself in need of a job. Six weeks in the business school, and we find her now on her way to her first position as secretary to Jim McKay, builder of yachts for California's millionaires. Dusky is being driven out to interview her new employer by Sam Ashford, her faithful suitor. Gosh, this wind is terrible, Sam. Yes, it brings the dust from the desert for a hundred miles. And dumps it on the coast here and on everyone who's unfortunate enough to be in the way. I hope I don't have to meet my new employer for the first time until I wash my face. I must look terrible. Well, naturally. No woman would want to see Jim McKay unless she looked her best. Oh, no? Why not? Jim McKay's as well known as Clark Gable. Breaker of hearts, jilter of women... One and only man who can flutter feminine hearts and go through life unscathed. Listen, what makes you so sure of that? You remember Marnie Davis? Oh, slightly. She was a friend of my sister Sylvia's. Uh, wasn't there something about a broken engagement? There was plenty about it. Marnie was all dressed up in white satin waiting at the church. The rector was there and all the guests. Marnie waited for an hour until the bridegroom sent a note saying he'd gone to South America. His name, by the way, was Jim McKay. Oh. But Marnie married. Yes, she and Jerry Atherton went directly to Mexico after their marriage. Well, what else has Jim McKay done? I don't know. Isn't that enough? I suppose so. Oh, listen, Dusky. Why don't you use your head and marry me instead of coming down to this little fishing village to work for a pittance? No, it isn't a pittance. It's good money and I need it. Now, listen, if you're afraid I'll fall for Jim McKay, stop worrying. I couldn't stand a man who'd done a thing like that. And just to show you I don't care what he thinks of me, you can stop now and let me tell him I'm in town, even if my face is dirty. Oh, I get it. You can't wait. You've got to see this Don Juan the minute you spot his office sign. Oh. All right, here we are. McKay Yachts. This is it. And there's a smudge of dirt on the end of your patrician nose, Dusky. Well, since I'm only a stenographer, what difference does it make how I look? <laughs> All right, it's your funeral. Nobody here. Well, I guess this is his office, all right. Golly, look at all those yacht models. I know I'm going to like working here. Are you looking for me? Oh, I I'm the new stenographer. Oh, yes, I was expecting you, Miss Burke. I'm just on my way down to the yacht basin. You want to come along and see the Colette yacht? It's the best 98-footer we ever built. Well, I'm afraid I can't. I've got a friend outside. I only drop by to tell you that I'd be to, to work in the morning. Oh, I see. Jim, darling. I couldn't leave without coming in to see you again, even if my husband is outside raging to be on our way. Oh, of course. You couldn't go away without kissing me goodbye. Come here. Don't take too long about it. I'll be at work in the morning, Mr. McKay. Oh, Sam was right. He's a heartbreaker. Well, he won't find me an easy victim. Hello? How'd you like Jim McKay? I despise him. Finish that letter up so I can sign it and get it in the mail before lunch. I'll do it right away. Is uh, anything the matter, Mr. McKay? What do you mean, is anything the matter? Well, I just noticed that you seem so preoccupied for the last day or two that... Oh. Uh, how long have you been here with me? Just two months now. Well, it's just about two months that Colette owes me for that boat I built for him. Oh. It's been finished and fueled and ready to go for six weeks, and I wish he'd come for it. I need the money for the business. 
I tied up practically all I had for this yacht of his. Oh, I see. They warned me Colette was a bad man to do business with, but he wanted this yacht and he should pay for it. Of course. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes the messenger boy now. Maybe it's a telegram from Colette. Oh, couldn't be. Telegram from McKay? Well, thanks. Hi, George, it is. Colette's coming for the yacht this afternoon. He wants to sail at once. He's bringing the crew with him. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, we're all set now, honey. Come here. Don't you ever dare kiss me again. Just because I work for you is no sign you can take advantage of me. Uh, you ought to know that this means as much to me as it does to you. I have a good mind to slap you. Oh. Get a dust rag and a can of brass polish. Colette will be here in two hours, and we've got to get everything on that boat in shape. taken his boat, and I've got $300,000 in cash right here in my hand. Oh, that's an awful lot of money to have in cash. I wonder why I didn't give you a check. I don't know, Colette, that way. You lock it in the safe. I've got to go down the street and send a telegram. I'll be back in a few minutes. Oh, $300,000 and $1,000 bills. That's an awful lot of money. I'd better put it in the safe. What was that? Oh, I thought I saw someone looking in the window. Gosh, I wish he didn't leave me here with all this money. I... I'm sure that was a man's face looking in the window. Well, I'd better lock it up quick. Oh, I feel a little better now. That's an awful lot of money hanging around, even in a safe. I wish Jim wasn't so casual about things. Hello. Is Jim there? Yes, but he's gone out for a few minutes. I'm Mr. McKay's secretary, D Dusky Burke. May I take a message for him? Oh, are you Sylvia Burke's little sister? Grown up? Yes. Well, this is Marnie Davis Atherton. Oh, yes, Mrs. Atherton. Oh, for goodness sake, call me Marnie. <laughs> I want to invite you to a weekend party along with Jim. Well, I really... Now, absolutely no excuses accepted. Jim's coming along, and so are you. Tell him you're both to come down tonight, as soon as he's through with the yacht business. Both of you bring we things for the weekend. But I... By the way, but... a friend of yours is here, Sam Ashford. Now, don't forget, I'll be expecting both of you. Jim's coming, and so are you. Goodbye. Oh, Yes, I'll go. I'll stop this uncertainty about Marnie Davis. She evidently doesn't want to stay jilted, and this will cure me for all time. Hello. How about some dinner? Well, Marnie Davis Atherton just called up and wants us to go up there tonight for the weekend. That's swell. You'll go, of course. It'll be a nice trip. We'll go down the bay in my speedboat. Oh, that'll be wonderful. We might as well get started as soon as possible. You go get your things, and I'll do the same, and I'll meet you back here in the office in half an hour. That'll save time. Right. But uh, how about the $300,000? What? Oh, that'll be all right until Monday. Are you sure? I I thought I saw a man looking in the window. Oh, nonsense. Don't let your nerves get the best of you. Go on now and get ready. What? You here already? Yes, I was here in a half an hour on the minute. Oh, I hope I didn't keep you waiting. Not more than ten minutes. All right, come along. We'll go out this way. I've got the boat over here at the landing. Here, give me your bag while you jump in. All right. All ready, I'll cast off. Well, this is something like it. I know we haven't had any dinner, but we'll get something to eat when we get there. You should see the place she's got down there. Jim, how long has Marnie been here? Oh, a few days. By the way, you're sure you locked up that money? It's safe. Good. And I've got nothing to worry about until next Monday. Mm. Pretty, isn't it, with the bay all blue and the hills violet and the gulls darting about? It's my favorite time of day. Just when it starts to get dark. Dusky, I've decided I've got to get something settled. I love you, and I want you to tell me exactly how you feel toward me. I love you too, Jim. Oh, I just knew you did, honey. You loved me from the first minute, and I loved you. Oh, Dusky. You do love me, honestly? You, you bet I do. <laughs> Well, Dusky, has the yacht-building lady had enough to eat? 
It was a lovely dinner, Sam, but where else? You'd better have a seat and make yourself at home. We have the place to ourselves, if I'm any judge. What do you mean? Your employer and our hostess have gone for a drive in the summer moonlight. Oh. Ready to consider a marriage proposition from me? Sorry, Sam, but I don't love you. All right. Just thought I'd ask. Will you have a drink? No, thanks. Might as well. Looks like it might be a long and lonesome evening. I've been gone three hours. Marnie's the limit. I came down here with her to help get the place ready for guests. Jerry and the crowd will arrive in the morning. I guess Jim and Marnie figured this would be the last night they could be alone. Ye gods, what a fellow Jim McKay must be. It's none of your business. Might as well marry me this time. You know what Jim is by now? You've had your fling. Why not call it a day? Listen, Sam Ashford, maybe I have had my fling, but I'm not going to marry you. I'm going to marry Jim McKay. What? Has he asked you? Not exactly, but I'm going to marry him just the same. I'll swear Jim must be a superman. I never yet saw a woman who could say a word against him. You were in love with him and defending him. All the time he's out riding with Marnie. You know what he did to her. Oh, stop it. Maybe they've had a wreck or something. Well, I hope so, for your sake. Oh, there's a car now. They're back. And it's about time. Oh, Jim, what's the matter? I'm ruined. Absolutely ruined. Oh, it was awful. What was awful? The office. Burglars blew the safe and tore the whole place to pieces. The police phoned me here. It's all gone, Dusky. All that money for the yacht, and I'm ruined. You and Marty. You and Marty. What's the matter? You were out looking for the money, and we thought you were out making love. What's that got to do with it? Didn't you jilt Marnie? Oh, you tell her about it, Marnie. I've got enough on my mind without going into all that. Oh, for goodness sake, do I have to go over all that when Jim's out so much money? Yes. It's more important to me than the money. All right. It was this way. Jim overheard Mother telling me that I'd have to marry some money soon, or the family would be ruined. The only man with money I knew was a playboy named Carl Townley. But I told Mother I'd marry him if necessary. Well, Jim overheard all this, and he proposed to me. And the next thing I knew, I was at the church in white satin, and knowing all the time that I was in love with Jerry Atherton. Oh. Well, to make a long story short, Jerry came back from Mexico and saw Jim before the wedding. When Jim understood how it was between Jerry and me, he politely jilted me at the altar. That's all there ever was between us. Oh, but now poor Jim's money is gone. We don't know where to find it. Jim's money is upstairs in my bag. What? I was afraid to leave it in the office, so I just brought it along with Dusky, me. Dusky, you darling. You loved me even when you doubted me, didn't you? Yes, but I'm through with doubt. And incidentally, you might tell me all about that blonde who wanted to kiss you a hundred times. Oh, that was my sister. You worried <laughs> about her, too. You don't know the man you're going to marry very well, do you? Sam Ashford, you're the biggest liar I ever saw in my life. Oh, now, Dusky, you ought to thank me. If I hadn't made a good story about Jim, you probably wouldn't even have been interested. Is that true, darling? I'd have loved you, Jim McKay, no matter what anyone told me about you. You have been listening to a romantic drama featuring the Love Story Girl and presented with the permission of Street and Smith, publishers of Love Story magazine.